Mark Rogers TV back with you and another college football recruit. We are combing through the ESPN 300. We don't have to go too far down the list to uh, run into Iyabi Anoma, who joins us from St. Francis Academy in Baltimore. Iyabi, how you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for taking the time for us. So we appreciate it. Know you're a busy man working on uh, definitely your football skills there and uh, academics as well. So so let's cut to the chase in regards to football. So you finished up junior season a couple months ago. You're working on your senior season. So uh, what are you doing to uh, try to be a better football player? I mean, uh, last year was my first year playing football. So it was like I wasn't – I was inexperienced. Right now uh, I share a room with uh, Kingsley Jonathan. He's going to Syracuse. He wakes me up in the middle of the night, teaches me certain tips. It's like – it's crazy. I mean, this experience living in the dorm is pretty awesome. Uh, then uh, BMI Miller, he's committed to Maryland also. He, uh, he stays literally over top of me, like literally. And uh, guys like him, Kingsley, and then Sam Thomas, defensive guys that are just like, just tell me like, you just got to be intense and like just hang around those guys, just push me consistently. It's been awesome. Yabi, do you have any idea, having played football for one year, <laughs> what kind of athletic ability you have to be able to play at this level and be considered by the top schools in the country? Has that sunk in? I, it really hasn't sunk in. I told uh, I told my father this. I, I said it really hasn't really sunk in that I'm, I'm ranked eighth in the country. And, like I just still go by every day. Where, like, yeah, I'm just regular. I'm just regular. But it's like everyone around me is like, oh yeah, you're eighth in the country. Like this is huge. And I'm just I don't think it's ever gonna really set in. But it's it's crazy. It is crazy. It's it's very amazing. So I'm gonna take a guess here. What is your what is your sports background? Is it soccer? Yeah, uh, it's basketball. Basketball. I, I play soccer too, though. I did play soccer a little bit, but uh, that's when uh my dad would referee sometimes on weekends, and I'll go out out there and play with like the older grown ups. But it wasn't like serious. Like they'll let me score, <laughs> but but yeah, I remember. But I, I played basketball. I played a uh, team Mello. EYBL, AAU, That's what, and I play with them right now. I'll be playing with them this summer also. So what transfers from the basketball court to uh, football, and especially playing the position you are, defensive end? I mean, uh, the quickness, definitely the quickness off the ball. I mean, without my quick, my first step, this year uh, I wouldn't have been that effective. I beat a lot of people off the ball, and I had a good reaction time. Um, Sometimes, like, also, like, I was very, like, uh, smart decisions. Like, playing EYBL, you can't really make mistakes like that because you're playing against, like, pro. You're basically playing against pros, people that are going to the next level in basketball. So you make a decision, that's it. They're going down the court for two, dunk. So football, on the football field, I learned that, like, there's certain gambles I can't take. Like, let's say my uh, – let's say we're running a 4-3. Four, four, and uh, I have outside containment. I see the inside. But I can't, I can't take it no matter what, because that's my my responsibility is to go out to, to is to contain, not to uh, cut inside and make the play. And I, I had to learn to, I had to uh, adjust. But I mean, after I adjusted to it, I mean, first couple games I was rocky, but after I adjusted to it, I mean, hey, I had these guys to coach me while I was on the field, so they can't complain. Yeah, so, so uh, I, I love the comment that you made a few minutes ago about uh, all the, the knowledge that you have around you. A lot more experienced football players waking you up at night, letting you know uh, what you need to do to get better. So so uh, you, you gave us one little nugget right there. Anything else that they've talked to you about recently that uh, you've applied? Literally, Kingsley's literally in this room right now. Like This man, every there's not a single day that this man doesn't tell me something about pass rush or move or – like the, my three point stance, or like lifting. I mean, he he's a like yeah, he's a meathead. Like he really lifts, and I, and so he has just certain techniques that he tells me like uh, benching. He would just like sometimes you don't have to really drop it all the way down, bring it down slowly, then explode back up. I mean that helps because you exert a lot of energy bringing it down fast. So I mean, staying with him has been tremendous. It's crazy. Because he knows, like, him, Sam, I'm talking about these guys, him, Sam, BMI, Gary. Gary plays offense. He commit to Arizona. He plays offense. But those guys, they know their stuff. And it's just, like, I'm just so grateful to be around these guys consistently 
And it, it came to the point that it's not even a team right now. It's, it's a family. Like, these guys, I consider these guys my brothers. Like, any person that can, like, he wakes up out of his sleep just to tell me something, just to, like, benefit me. Like, it's more, that's more than just a teammate. That's a brother. Yeah, that's awesome to hear because the first thing that some people might think is, okay, well, these guys are competing against each other. And obviously you are to a certain extent, depending on what positions you're playing, but uh, that you guys banded together that quickly and, and formed a brotherhood to uh, try to help each other and stick together. That's awesome. That is really good stuff. Uh, uh, you, you talk about being in the weight room. I got to think that as a soccer and basketball player, sure, there there's some gains you, you can make in the weight room, but you don't have to be in the weight room. You, you can play those sports and not be in the weight room. You can't play football at that level and, and not be in the weight room. So you're probably spending a lot more time in the weight room, I would think. Yeah, a lot compared to me being in the weight room, like past years, way, way, way more time. I'm talking about like now it's every day in the weight room. Whether my body, my body's aching right now from like a day ago when my coach Bird, he, uh, he made me do leg work. I don't like leg work a lot, but. I mean, I do it, but I don't really like it. But Bird, I'm mean, like, it's just consistent. It's just like the way it is now. It's just the coaches have us on a like consistent thing. We study hall, lift, and then like, I like after school, cause we I, I live on the dorm thing. Uh, I'll go over there with Bird and Kingsley and the rest of us in the house, and we'll just go do another lift, whether it's arms or legs. It's up to uh, Bird. Yabi, when you're looking at um, some of some of the offers that you have, and you're thinking about a, a school to go to, you know we're focused on football. You guys as football players, but obviously it's it's a way of life. It's spending three to four years somewhere, maybe even longer. It's uh, academics. It's it's uh, trying to fi find a fit that you just described there that you have in the dorm with guys that you're going to band together and be brothers with, and finding a coaching staff that you can trust. Uh, what are some of the things that you're looking for in a school? I'm looking for <clears throat> how they treat their students, like life without football. I want to notice like the campus life. I want to notice like how the students. How, I want to be a professor. Like I want to see how they teach. Like it just it's so much that, that I'm going to consider when I make this uh, decision. I'm not going to go off just strictly athletic because hey, what happens if I mess up my ankle, my knee? I need a backup plan. So uh, I'm going to find a school, also a good law program. Uh, I'm not afraid to go far from home, so it's not. it just all depends on the school. But And then the coaching, like, are they a 3-4, 4-3? I mean, it doesn't matter. Due to, like, how fast I am, I, like, I'll learn. It just had, like, I, I'll learn. It doesn't matter to me. But uh, stuff like that. Then also, uh, are, are these coaches going to really – keep their word some coaches promise promise you certain things well i don't want to get promised starting time i don't want that i want to go there and earn it because i don't want to ever have that chip that oh yeah you were given this i was never given anything i wasn't supposed to start this year i earned my starting spot i was supposed to play punt kingsley him kingsley was supposed to play the defensive end Kingsley ended up moving to outside linebacker and i played the end so it's like i don't i was never given anything I don't want it to start there. I mean, but one thing I do want is my number. I do want number. I'll, I'll earn that. I'll earn number nine. Num number nine. So that's special. Is there a reason? Oh yeah, my uh, grandmother. She passed. She like she liked that number. Uh, and also nine. I just if you turn nine upside down to six, and uh, that's how many sisters I have. Oh wow, six sisters. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, it, it's, it's nice to get to, uh, know you, Nabi, uh, you Nabi Anoma, eighth rated player, according to ESPN. Uh, what are the coaches saying in regards to why you're rated so high? What, what do you bring to the table? That's so special. I mean, I had 24 sacks. I had four sacks against IMG. I mean, they're just saying they see a whole bunch of potential. They're seeing how I can move. I can adjust. I'm not afraid to hit. Uh, they, they just, a lot of coaches say they fell in love with my film. I mean, I think mostly, in my opinion, I think what the coaches really see is just that, like, how quick I am to learn. If you hear, if you, like, hear the background of, like, how I even, like, started playing football and the whole thing, it's just crazy that all this can just be jumbled up into one year. Not even a whole year. All this into, like, a couple months and then, like, 
I'm here, eight player in the country. Like, I think a lot of coaches are surprised about that, and that's what's really pulling their eye. Definitely, based on what you just described, uh, putting academics first, uh, that, that speaks to your intelligence and being able to, like you say, uh, it's one thing to be book smart, and that's great, and that helps in certain areas, but you're obviously uh, smart on your feet on the field and be able to apply all th the game has to offer in one year and to be able to be that productive is, is crazy and speaks beyond athleticism to be able to retain uh, schemes and, and read an offense and, and, and read the plays is, is pretty amazing. Right. All right. Uh, any thoughts in regards to when you're going to make a decision? You obviously have 11 months to, to make that call. Do you have a list right now? No, actually, uh, the crazy thing about it is that I talked this over with my, uh, my parents. I mean, I play around with Kingsley. I mentioned a random school every night just to see his opinion. Uh, I talked to uh, girl Jewel. And it's like, I think I'm going to wait to, my last, uh, to the last day. To commit, I'm not going to commit at the, uh, a normal American game. I'm committing. I'm gonna wait till the last day. I just think I want to think. Make sure this is the, the school. This is more. This is like one of the biggest. No, this is the biggest decision of my life at this moment. And uh, it, you don't get a second chance at this. And so that's why I want to think this all the way through. My parents, we're going to we're going to take all the visits. I'm not going to skip a visit. Uh, and yet, at the end of the a signing day, I make my decision. I won't make a decision. I won't cut no school off because you never know. Coaching changes. I learned this. It's a funny story. I learned this like firsthand. I saw it. Gary uh, Gary Brightwell committed to Temple. Temple coaches changed. Went to Berlin. Gary decommitted from Temple and went to uh, Arizona. So it's like you never know what the coaching change. So I don't never. You don't never want to commit early. Coaches end up changing when something happens, and now you're now they you might still have the offer, but you don't know if the person there is he's as, as like he wants you to the same degree as the other uh coaches. Did. So I'm gonna wait. I can't imagine at this point, uh, based on how you're rated and, and based on your production, that any coach is not going to want you as much as the other coach. But definitely, that's that's part of the equation. And uh, we all know that once the last game's played in the regular season for any year that a lot of coaches are let go, yeah, and, and you see that transition made at the end of uh, every college football season. A Yabi Anoma, so remember the name. Weak side defensive end, one of the top eight players in the country, according to ESPN. Iyabi, uh, we know that you have a lot going on, so I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Yeah, anytime. Have a good night. You too.